Well, good morning. good morning. I said it would be a snowy day in Washington for me to be doing anything other than St. Patrick's Day events, and indeed it is. How many of you are Irish? God bless you. The holiest day of the year, St. Patrick's Day. So, so Matt and P Pat, Mike and Pat, are on an Irish luxury liner, and sure doesn't it hit an iceberg and sinks. They're the only two survivors, but fortunately, there's a lifeboat. So they get on the lifeboat, Pat's the smarter of the two, and says, Mike, rummage around and see if you can find a compass whereby we could, you know, maybe steer this boat in stormy seas. And uh, Mike rummages around, he can't find anything except an old lamp. It's like a lantern, and he picks it up, he says, look, look, it might be one of those magical lanterns. And Pat says, well, what the hell, rub it. He rubs it and poof, up comes the genie. They're all excited. He says, no, the genie says, now lads, I'm not your normal genie. You only get one wish. And without thinking, Mike says, turn the sea into a sea of Guinness. And poof, it's done. And Mike looks at him and says, you damn fool. Now we have to pee inside the boat. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, um, as Harold said in the introduction, I come from Fairfax County. We share that in common. Harold founded our local, 2068, in Fairfax County. And he didn't just, you know, establish it. It is one of the most robust unions in all of the Commonwealth of Virginia. It has done incredible things in a climate, a state climate, that's not the most hospitable. And Harold, congratulations for that, that endeavor. It really has made, uh, created a model for the entire United States and certainly for our brothers and sisters across Virginia. Give Harold a hand for it. I'm a big believer in you go home with them what bring you to the dance. Um, I have had the support of the firefighters in all of my 10 elections. Uh, and, uh, and I see John Nemec, our local president, who just got reelected by acclamation. Give it up for John Nemec. <laughs> Wonderful job, John. I'm proud at the federal level to be working with you on a broad agenda, uh, on safer grants, on trying to make sure we restore funding for FEMA for the urban search and rescue teams, um, on uh, fighting for federal firefighters flexibility and, and fairness act, uh, and fighting for your national collective bargaining bill. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing in Congress right now. We are dominated by a, a crowd on the other side of the aisle, unfortunately, that knows the cost of everything and the value of nothing. And I have to tell you, uh, you know, this is a crowd that thought it was perfectly okay to have 56 votes to defund healthcare reform. This is a crowd that champions uh, the leadership in Wisconsin and Michigan that wants to return those states to an era uh, before organized labor had improved the quality of life for working men and women. Um, this is a crowd that is going directly at collective bargaining rights, going at directly at organized labor, going at working men and women, going at uh, actually public employees and their unions uh, in, an, in a relentless way. That's why the stakes this November are so important. It is critical that we have the ability to kill that kind of activity in the United States Senate. And the geography this year is all red. We have seven red states represented by Democratic senators. And whether you're a Democrat or Republican, this isn't just a partisan battle. It is about the ability of this country to have a sane dialogue about our direction, about understanding that investments in human beings, in research and development, in uh, infrastructure, are what is going to keep this country competitive and great. If we retreat from those investments, I guarantee you, you will be explaining to your children how the Chinese won the day, how we're now second fiddle to somebody else that was willing to make those investments, was willing to make those decisions. I like to remind Republicans, you know, it was Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Republican, 
who created the interstate highway system. Thank God he made that investment. The return on that investment is almost incalculable. It brought the country together. It reduced the cost of transport. It allowed for a much free flower, flowing, more efficient uh, movement of goods and services in America. It connected us in terms of communities. And it is a gift that keeps on giving to this very day. A modern analog is the internet. The internet started out as a DARPA net for the Defense Department. It was entirely a federally funded R&D project. Not one dime of private sector money. It took the private sector to help understand the commercial applicability, and I haven't even started drinking yet. <laughs> and, and aren't we glad they did, but whatever it cost to develop DARPANET was worth every penny. It has completely transformed life on the planet in terms of how we talk to each other, how we connect with each other, how we do business, how we experience entertainment. All of that is at risk in terms of our future this November. Because if a Republican Senate intends to do what I have lived with for the last four years in a Republican House, we need to really gird for battle. It is really important we get involved in the 2014 elections. It is really important that we, we kind of hold the fort so that worse things don't happen. And you've seen what happens when those folks get into power. Look no further than Wisconsin, as Harold mentioned, or Michigan, or Michigan. And those, those weren't necessarily going to be the worst uh, of the lot. So the stakes are really high. And this country has a choice. I'm going to continue fighting no matter what. I'm Irish. I maintain my sense of humor and I like a good fight. And I promise you I will continue to fight on your behalf. But we need more champions in Congress, not fewer. We need to make sure that our issues are being articulated in a way that we can, we can fight for them, we can defend them, because those values are worth fighting for. What you do and your colleagues do each and every day gives witness to those values the willingness to sacrifice, the willingness to be there in time of distress. Hopefully, lots of boredom, but now and then, interspersed with moments of great stress and peril. That's the contract you undertook on behalf of us. And our community needs to be reminded about those values and how important they are, and what it takes to espouse that value to live that kind of commitment, to take on that kind of contract. Those are American values at a very fundamental level, and we must not lose sight of them. So I'm glad to stand shoulder to shoulder with the firefighters. I always have, and I promise you I always will, but I want some help. I need some more friends and colleagues willing to do that as well. So please keep that in mind as you think about 2014. The stakes could not be higher in this midterm election. And actually, if each and every one of us does our job, we will be able to preserve those values. We will be able effectively to fight for them. We will have more allies in the United States Congress. Thank you so much on the snowy day for inviting me to come and speak to you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for what each and every one of you does. Thank you to your leadership for being one of the most effective uh, leadership groups, frankly, that affects the Hill and that represents organized labor in America. God bless you all and happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.